after talking about male Seiyu and their music labels, music royalties, Seiyu artists going the indie route, as well as the important feats that helped shape the music industry for Seiyu wanting to be artists, it's time to talk about something that has been happening for a couple of years, although still barely noticeable. Idol culture has been influencing Seiyu artists in all aspects of their career. From their debuts to their sound, their looks and even how frequently new CD releases are for some artists. Let's kick off this episode of Seiyu Lounge. Welcome to Seiyu Lounge, I am your host Vanessa and today's topic is Idol Culture Influencing Seiyu Artists' Careers, the solo debuts. If some of you are perhaps K-pop fans, you can already sniff out a comeback as soon as your favorite idols start changing their hairstyles and colors or how they suddenly lose weight, am I right? I dare say it's the same for J-pop fans, but on this I can't comment as I don't follow any J-pop idols. All those visual changes are something that I was not expecting to say that Seiyu would have to do, but yeah, you can already tell when a male Seiyu is making a debut or a comeback, although things aren't as obvious as with K-pop or J-pop, two sides of the music industry that have been influencing Seiyu artists in the last couple of years. And why aren't things that obvious? So you are still much more conventional than idols, so in a sense, few are the daredevils that get crazy with their hair color like, for example, Takuya Gucci gets. Sometimes say you don't want to change their hairstyle because they sort of want to cosplay the characters they voice in live events and having enough hair to style goes a long way into making that possible. Yusuke Shirai mentioned on his YouTube channel that fellow Fling Posse member Soma Saito has massive bangs that he can't and won't cut because he wants to, if possible, cosplay Gentaro on a live setting. Arthur Lounsbury is insanely committed to cosplaying Phantom Iris's Felix and for that he's grown his hair and dyed it in a similar color to the character. Like them, there's plenty of other CU out there that don't change their hairstyles or length. Most of the times, contracts with some 2D music projects require the CU to perform live and having the hair at a certain length or in a certain color. Yes, that can be specified in the contract. At the same time, you have talent agencies not letting say you change hairstyles or hair color, so you can't say you can sniff a comeback or a debut from say you artists' changes in hairstyles. It won't happen, at least not now. How has idol culture influenced say you artists' careers? The most popular members of a group or project get a solo debut the best visuals, get a debut, and so on and so forth. This is extremely obvious since 2017. Before 2017 you couldn't say that the most popular members, for example, would ever get a solo debut. That wasn't the norm. Some would, some wouldn't. It was impossible to predict debuts. So let's see how you can spot a solo artist's debut using idol culture logic. Take what I am going to say as guidelines, not rules, as many things can change from debut to debut. Spotting debuts is relatively easy once you understand and notice the signs. There's a high chance your favorite Seiyu will make a solo debut if they are the face of a 2D music project or are popular because of said project. The media and fans have been openly praising that Seiyu about their singing skills. Or they are starting to lose weight like crazy. Some of you will say, but those are normal things. Yes, I agree with you, those are normal things. Well, losing weight like crazy is not normal though, most of the times it's not even healthy. 
But yes, these are mostly normal things. However, these mostly normal things combined with something that say you may have said before in an interview or with them being part of a really popular music project or having expressed their dream of being singers, it changes things a little bit. Let's check a couple of examples first about Seiyu that are the face of a 2D music project or are popular because of said project and thus got their opportunity to make a solo debut. Let's take a look at Shugo Nakamura, Yumu Uchida and Gakuto Kajiwara. Shugo Nakamura is the face and voice of the Idol Master Saidem franchise. The franchise kicked off in 2014 and honestly, back then, no one knew who he was. He's the leader of the main unit, Dramatic Stars, and has, since the very start of the franchise, showed his insanely good singing skills. Turns out Nakamura dazzled everyone with his singing and leadership and slowly he started to draw attention to himself. Nakamura has mentioned in interviews over the years that he likes playing guitar and singing and actually his aim when moving from Okinawa to Tokyo was to be a musician instead of a voice actor. In 2018, Lantis signed Shugo Nakamura as a solo act. Lantis is owned by Bandai Namco. And yes, the Idol Master Saidem franchise is owned by Bandai Namco. Yumochida was a relatively unknown name until he appeared as a member of Idol Master Saidem's Dramatic Stars. However, it wasn't his performances part of that group that put him in the spotlight and earned him a chance at being a solo artist. It helped giving him visibility, but people only started looking at him with a lot of seriousness when he delivered stunning performances as part of Heavens in the Utapri franchise. His performance in Mighty Aura, alongside Mamoru Mianu that is easily named as one of the best singers among male seiyu and with a charisma that is hard to top, made a lot of jaws drop. Uchida nudged past Miano with his performance and overflowing charisma. All eyes started to be on the energetic kid with a sweet angel's voice and a versatility that few Seiyu artists could match. From that moment on, everyone was aware of Yumu Uchida's impressive talents as a singer. And of course, King Records was all over that. Utapri franchise's music is published by King Records' sub-label Broccoli and in 2018 Yumuchida signed with King Records' sub-label King Amusement Creative and made his solo debut. Gakuto Kajiwara is still a relatively new name in the seiyuu industry. Some people know him for his role as Asta in Black Clover and not for the best reasons while others know him because his bass leader, Suzaku, in the hip-hop mixed-media project Paradox Live. Coincidentally, Gakuto Kajiwara is the project's face, having a strong presence in all promotional events for the franchise. As bass leader, Kajiwara has showcased his solid rapping skills, as well as power and delivery creating quite the intense set of performances time and time again. Fans started to notice his talents when, together with his work for Bay, Kajiwara started posting covers of popular songs on his YouTube channel. The stage was set for a music label to notice and offer him a contract. It just so happens that Paradox Live is distributed by Avex and AVEX had a privileged position over all other music labels. And thus, in 2020, Gakuto Kajiwara made his solo debut and he signed to AVEX. Notice how not only you could, in a way, predict the solo debut, but also the music label that would pick them up. Although not a rule, these examples create an interesting pattern. Then you have the other side of the coin. 
the Sayudet, despite being part of a wide variety of music projects, never made a solo debut until the media and fans started to openly praise them for their singing skills. Let's look at three examples. Soma Saito, Makoto Furukawa and Daiki Yamashita. Soma Saito. Part of 10 2D music projects and 8 of those are still active to this date. Soma Saito is one of the most active seiyuu when it comes to showcasing his singing skills. Clean singing, four baritone screamo, growly low tones and high notes, rap, a crystal clear falsetto and an ability to harmonize with anyone are just some of the things you can expect him to be able to pull off with a level of perfectionism that will make your jaw drop. He's a true tenor with a wide vocal range covering much of the baritone range and going quite high on his tenor range to deliver high notes almost in the female scale. With each project he's a part of, the media and fans can't help but continuously praise him for being a complete singer with a nice, gentle singing tone and a vast array of techniques to his disposal that make him one of the best singers among male seiyuu. Since 2015 he's one of the most sought-after seiyuu for 2D music projects and that is more than justified. So why did it take that long for Saito to make his solo debut? He didn't want to be a solo artist. Saito mentioned in an interview around the time In Bloom was released and during a radio appearance he put further emphasis on the fact that singing as a career option wasn't something he originally wanted to focus on, especially when he was already a voice actor. That's until 2017, when Saito decided to give it a try at being a solo artist, thus joining Sony Music Japan's new sub-label, Sakura Music. Fans had been asking for a solo debut from him for quite a long time, and media outlets in Japan were all over the news sharing the same excitement about his solo debut. It took years of praise from fans and media and eventually Saito's resolve to give it a shot and see where he could go as an artist or even if he would enjoy it. And we now are graced yearly with masterpieces from him. Makoto Furukawa is the same, however with a twist. Although part of 11 2D music projects, with 8 of those being active as I speak, is also a CU whose voice is pretty sought after and that's because there's really no one sounding or performing like him. Furukawa is energetic and flamboyant, something that adds quite the unique image to his performances. He's got a solid vocal range as a baritone and an emotionally powerful voice tone that suits both hard rock songs as well as musical style songs, jazz and even ballads. Versatile and with a charisma and presence that suck you in, many people kept praising Furukawa for his singing and performances. He sounded and looked natural in his performances with the Idolmaster Saidem's group Cafe Parade, and with each project he tackled, people got to experience more and more of his skills as a singer. And thus, since 2015, fans have been wanting to hear him sing outside of 2D music projects. It took quite a while for Furukawa, only making his solo debut in 2018, with Miserable Masquerade. And why was that? The traditional looks for pop artists weren't originally there. Out of all the CU I've mentioned so far in this episode, Furukawa was the one that underwent the most visual changes since debut. Before making a debut with Lantis, Furukawa underwent changes to meet the bare minimum visual standards that are now demanded of seiyuu artists. Once again, I believe this is crazy as a seiyuu artist is trying to sell their singing skills, not their looks. But once again, 
There are some people that only check music by singers that look good or hot in their books. So there you have it. To make a debut as a singer, say you now have to follow a certain look as singers even if they're going to make a solo debut as jazz singers. Crazy, but yeah, this is a fine example of how idol culture has been influencing Seiyu artists. Daiki Yamashita is a vocal powerhouse. There's no doubt about it. He's a massively skilled singer with classical singing training in his repertoire. He impresses with his vocal range as well as with his versatility as a tenor. Being able to enter the baritone range and performing songs in that range, as well as hitting insanely high notes, some of those close to the female vocal range. He's part of seven 2D music projects covering a wide variety of music genres, from visual K-rock, to traditional Japanese music, to jazz pop and lyrical music. In all groups he manages to blow people away with his skills. His harmonies are perfect, his high notes are flawless, he can drive a song as well as support other singers. He can make chills run down your spine with his rich emotional range. There are very few seiyu with the same characteristics as him as singers. Similar, in a way, are Toshiki Toyonaga and Soma Saito, two insanely versatile tenors with quite the rich emotional range. Of course, as a rare talent among Seiyu, it was a matter of time before people started to notice that he is a special singer. When you mention his singing endeavors, especially the most impressive, you must mention his jaw-droppingly impressive work as part of Growth, or his jazzy performances as part of Nights, or even the power and poise he brings to the table for Heavens' songs. Everyone noticed and praised these talents, however, it took Yamashita quite a while before deciding to make a solo debut. That happened in 2021, as he announced he was signed to a sketch and set to release a solo mini-album titled Hear Me. And after years waiting, fans finally get to listen to Daiki Yamashita, the solo artist. He's another case of a CU that held off making a solo debut until something changed, which we of course don't know, but I speculate that it's a mix of capitalizing on his popularity plus showcasing his singing skills in an environment he can control, as well as a thank you for wanting to hear me to his fans. As a matter of fact, the mini-album's title sure hints at a message to his fans. The lesson to take from these examples is, if your favorite CU is the poster boy or the face and voice of a 2D music project, and that project ends up being popular, expect him to be approached by a music label in which that project is housed. That music label will offer them a contract to be a solo artist. Whether the CU accepts it or not, that's another story as you could tell by some of the examples in this episode. So you got a good, at least I hope so, episode covering solo debuts and how those have been influenced by idol culture. I hope you got a good idea on why some say you make solo debuts and while others don't. Popularity is king. After that, music labels look for visuals, and only after that, they look for skill. It can justify why some say you, with subpar singing skills, have solo debuts, while others that are insanely skilled and wanted or want to be singers have never or have yet to debut, or alternatively, have debuted but they were left on the side by their music labels because, for example, they aren't popular enough to sell a good amount of CD copies with each release. 
In the next episode, I'll be covering an interesting thing within this topic, which is to say, say you losing weight like crazy to make solo debuts. Now tell me, have you noticed any other details that give away when a Seiyuu is making a debut in the music industry? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, leave your comments as complex or as simple as they may be, and you can be featured on upcoming episodes of Seiyuu Lounge. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the Hand That Feeds HQ's weekly mail Seiyuu and music-related content, hit the subscribe button. I'll return next week with another episode of Seiyuu Lounge. Thank you for listening and see you guys around.